Thanks very much, Margaret. Uh, we'll keep cracking on. So I'll just talk a little bit about the, uh, the forages uh, work area. Uh, essentially, there's two, two main areas of this. One is around um, the in vitro screening for, for potential forages with antimethanogenic activity. And the other really is around supporting research for, for pasture methodologies and uh, accounting of uh, forages where we've already got quite a bit of uh, field data around their antimethanogenic uh, potential. And obviously the screening for new forages feeds into, uh, as, as we see leaders in that, it feeds into uh, the uh, methodology supporting uh, the development of the work. So in terms of the screening, uh, looking at a range of different forages, te temperate legumes in particular, uh, potentially brassicas and shrubs, uh, using a standardized method across three, three laboratories for in vitro assessment of, of these various forages. Um, and the idea is that uh, samples will be collected from these and from other uh, samples we already have collected previously to then look at rapid methods to uh, measure the bioactive in these legumes. One of the challenges in the grazing system is is knowing the amount of bioactive that's actually going down the animal's throat to elicit the uh, response in methane reduction. So there's a couple of projects looking at that. Uh, and the other side, in terms of supporting research for uh, methodologies and for uh, carbon accounting, um, really field evaluation of methane emissions from various projects in that area. Uh, so commercial scale uh, evaluations using a range of technologies, including green feed <laughs> and, and other methods. Uh, related to that is, is some more in-depth research. We're looking at the variability and the response to the changes in methane, in methane yield. And the two forages we're focusing on are Desmanthus and Leukina. We're already working in those areas uh, and that work will continue. And again, uh, again, more samples generated, which which feed into the um, the rapid methodology methods for supporting a methodology. And so, what I'll do now is just quickly um, go through the. Uh, come on, move on. There we go. We've got eight projects we'll talk about. Uh, this is the order they're going to be in. So if everyone's ready to, to come on board, I think what we'll do in the interest of time, we'll just move straight on to uh, Guang Di and he can start with the high performance pasture mixes. Oh, okay. Um, Guang Di from PPI. Um, so uh, this, this this project is mainly uh, deal with those uh, high performance pasture mixes. And uh, so we have a few uh, number of those pasture species has uh, potential anti messengenic potentials to reduce the uh, methane emission. But the problem here is that uh, how we can put uh, those uh, potential species in the in the ground to uh, to grow with uh, compatible um, species and also their persistence in a different environment. <clears throat> so the ultimate goal was that uh, to increase animal production uh, with, uh, without uh, increasing all, we just reduce the uh, methane emission. And um, this is basically the uh, objectives for the research. And the research separated into uh, three stages. For first one is uh, the uh, screening potential species. Basically, we, we are generally now this uh, 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 potential species, the, 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 the thing is we have to uh, grow in the ground, but uh, this will collaborate with the other component of the, in the program. The major uh, component start with us is the regional evaluation of uh, pasture mixes. We will try different mixes and the proportion of those target species in the mix and uh, also test uh, um, the, uh, the potential of uh, methane uh, reduction for all these uh, different mixes. The third stage is uh, put into uh, grazing experiment. So uh, we are planning to at least to run two grazing experiments and 
um, first to uh, uh, check for the animal performance um, on these mixes and then also uh, quantify the uh, mist and reduction in under grazing conditions. That's for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's back to me. Haley's on leave this week, so I'll I'll just talk to uh, to her pro project idea. Uh, so this is a NIR based proposal, um, three components, and again leading towards rapid and cheap methods to support a forages methodology. So uh, really understanding the antimethanogenic capacity of a crop or a forage in a in a in a pasture. To reduce methane under commercial conditions. So there's three components to this: uh, using forage NIRS to predict fermentability and methane of a range of plant species, and these will come from within NLMP2 and and legacy samples. And I think also there may well be samples from the from the supplements pr project as well that could fit into this as well. So the idea is to have a, a, a centralised system whereby we can test under controlled and standardised conditions. Uh, the fermentability and methane uh, emission reduction of a range of, of different uh, compounds and plant species. The second component um, is to see if we can go from just identifying the, uh, the methane reduction in vitro to predicting concentrations of bioactives in legumes, grasses and forbs and shrubs. So the idea is can we use NIRS to actually measure, for example, tannin concentration uh, in the plant, because clearly, if this is the driver for reducing methane emission, uh, it's crucial that we understand that in a in a field environment where that could be a highly variable uh, component of the um, of the system. And then finally, um, again, uh, under commercial or semi-commercial type conditions, can we use fecal NIRS to determine the ingestion of these bioactives? So, from a fecal sample, can we get an estimate of the consumed bioactive, which would then uh, hopefully directly relate to uh, a reduction in methane in a in an uh, animal under a commercial grazing uh, condition. So the driver here is for rapid, cheap methods to support a forages methodology, but also to support the uh, carbon accounting uh, when these crops are grown at a broad scale across uh, across the industry. If we now move on to Stu on the second side of this area. Okay, uh, thanks, Ed. Uh, so this project is very similar to Haley's in that uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, develop techniques that allow us to identify the the proportion of, of legume that's in the diet. So for methodologies that show a dose response with respect to um, increased consumption of a legume resulting in decreased methane emissions, then we need some method or some technique to actually be able to measure this and what proportion of the diet is actually the legume. So we've been working on a, on a DNA based identification system. So we have a database now of um, lots of grazing plants and legumes and, and including ones that are relevant to the Australian system. And we can actually see um, proportionally the amount of uh, legume that's consumed by these animals, which was done on some uh, pen trials that we had access to. And now what we've done is move on to developing quantitative assays that will allow us to actually put a, a very accurate uh, measure to how much legume has been consumed. Uh, and we see this being able to be adapted to, to all the different forages that, that are going through this program. Finished? Yep. Okay, uh, Louis, I think you're up now. Yeah, thanks, Ed. So our project is um, is about using legumes and uh, uh, trying to facilitate the implementation of uh, areas with legumes and phosphorus fertilizers to decrease methane emissions and to increase carbon sequestration into the soil. Uh, and we put together a, a group with uh, soil scientists and uh, forage agronomist and animal scientist to really uh, work to in the field to validate the measurements for uh, methane emissions and, and carbon sequestrations when using legumes and also to 
try to develop an easier way to monitor change in soil carbon through uh, the use of uh, remote sensing technologies. So we are proposing a range of uh, activities going from small plot scale uh, experiments, uh, evaluating the impact of phosphorus and legumes on, on the soil and on methane mitigations, going into more large scale plots, grazable plots, uh, and uh, uh, more on-farm measurements as well. And that fits into what uh, Mary Fletcher was mentioning, the modeling package to work with the government on a ERF methodology or, or a certification, carbon neutral certification for farmers using legumes and phosphorus fertilizers to increase forage production and, uh, and beef production. Thanks, Seth. Thank you. Jude, you're up. Good afternoon. It's Jude Bond. I'm working in Armidale with the New South Wales Department of Primary Industry, and I have a livestock nutrition um, focus um, <clears throat> as well as reducing methane. So my our proposal is to um, evaluate desmanthus in um, livestock, whether it be sheep or cattle, which is suitable. Um, firstly, doing um, the um, pot trials to work out which conditions desmanthus grows well in under different temperature or moisture conditions in the field um, and assessing the nutritive value to the livestock as well as any secondary compounds that might reduce methane. And then we'd move to a um, pen trial type situation where we had a cut and carry experiments um, using the advice of agronomists um, in the group of NLMP and New South Wales DPI, who've done a lot of work on growing desmanthus grass mixes and um, having a trial where we have different amounts of desmanthus with the grass. Um, and again, uh, um, assessing the pasture quality in terms of animal nutrition, biomass, et cetera, and also um, the um, reduction in methane uh, using um, respiration chambers. Um, we then want to uh, take the best cultivars and mixes to a field trial and, um, and look at um, the performance of the animals and, and the potential emission reduction. So it's um, basing some uh, high throughput and less expensive in vitro type of work with the animal uh, performance and mitigation effects. Thank you. Uh, so it's back to me again. This is a project proposal uh, headed up by Agrimix Pastures uh, that involves uh, CSRO, UNE, uh, um, QUT. So it's quite a large project and I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about the overall um, aspects of this proposal. It's one that's already been uh, put forward to MLA for, uh, for so investment. So I, I think it fits into this into this NLMP2 program. So the idea is to um, to really come up with a generic type of uh, forages methodology, if you like, one that would work across across scale and across different forages by by coming up with different ways of monitoring uh, a pasture under commercial growth conditions. So, satellite imagery uh, is is one way of evaluating pastures, and this will be looked at in this project. But it will be uh, ground truth against um, extensive uh, botanal analysis of the pastures. Uh, also supported by green feed emissions uh, monitors measuring methane from individual cattle on these buffalo grass or buffalo plus desmanthus pastures. So the idea is that we'll get data from the satellite imagery and attempt to then uh, marry that up the proportion of desmanthus that was measured in the paddock and also the methane reduction using green feed units. Uh, the SARA role in this really is to then look at uh, these samples coming off this project to put them through the NAR system to determine, you know, the legume intake and see if that correlates with the green feed data and will hopefully support the satellite, satellite imagery work. I guess part of the thoughts here are that satellite imagery, broad scale, very effective across uh, large areas, um, but probably a high, higher degree of uncertainty around the emissions reduction. So if you can combine that with 
uh, an NIR or potentially a DNA method that Drew, uh, that um, Stu talked about, uh, we may be able to reduce that uncertainty in a methodology. So it's an idea of come up with a generic methodology and then work at continuously improving that that type of uh, methodology through through ongoing research. And we'll now pass on to Dave Rowlings. Uh, thanks, Ed. So. Yes, my proposal is um, building on that work that Edel will be doing, uh, particularly in the Desmantis space. So we are working uh, through the Soil Carbon Program, uh, particularly around Desmantis, but across a, a range of other def uh, different methodologies as well. Uh, one of the core instruments that we'll be using are these eddy covariance flux towers. So because we're sort of pairing up um, with this other work that uh, Ed, Ed and Agrimix and UNE are doing, I suppose it gives us a good opportunity to test uh, a different um, field scale um, method slash verification uh, methodology for sort of you know the actual actual on the ground in field um, measurements of methane reduction. Uh, so we'll have about a dozen of these towers in paired sites across sort of the northern well from the Gulf down to. Northern New South Wales. Um, so I suppose the uh, idea is working with uh, collaborators in New Zealand who have um, a bit more experience in this, but also with Ed, who's also done work some work in this, um, to try and get methane um, through Micromet as well as uh, carbon sort of things. So that's our proposal. Thank you. And uh, last one. So uh, over to you, Mark. Thanks, Sid. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, my name is Mark Harrison from Queensland University of Technology, and, and the focus of the, the proposed project is really to develop technologies to enhance the value of leguminous feedstocks in both uh, extensive and intensive production. Um, we're proposing to explore the opportunities to do that in three fairly broad areas. So the first is around the development of, of harvesting and processing technology options for, for legumes. Um, the goal really is to identify and demonstrate technologies that enable more widespread integration of harvested legumes into feeds and improve productivity. Um, we've got a lot of expert, uh, a lot of expertise here at QUT in crop harvesting and process engineering, and we'd like to deploy that um, to, towards uh, legume harvesting and processing. Um, that area, the research in that area, will also include the, the assessment of impact of har harvesting and processing on on the rumen microbiome and the phanogenesis using um, techniques similar to those that a lot on, 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 the, on the call already will use and, and that we're currently using our rural research and development for profit projects. Um, the second area is, is about integrating legumes into pelleted feed with, with tropical fodders, um, both uh, existing and emerging. Um, and it's really about leveraging existing pilot scale capability at QUT and the relationships that we've developed with, with uh, UNE and UQ over the last four years to understand what's needed to produce either complete or supplemental feeds containing harvested legumes and, and demonstrate the methane production uh, and or animal productivity. And finally, um, the third area is really about um, leveraging off existing QT biorefinery capability and expertise to, uh, develop, uh, to, to undertake really quite detailed physical and chemical characterization of legume fiber, protein and phenolics. Um, We've been doing that for a long time uh, in complex mixtures, as I said, based on our, our biorefinery capability. And we'll be using that capability to analyse materials that are generated not only in areas one and two of the project, but also to um, work with other uh, projects or activities within the legume program uh, and provide some of that um, detailed analytics on material from the field uh, or um, as we're doing in other projects, material at different stages of gestion through the, the GI tract of, of, of cattle. So um, that's a summary of the, the project so far. Thanks, Mark. I'll just quickly um, just go back to that first slide and just uh, try and explain a bit how these different projects fit together. And you can see that um, some people have mentioned more than once because I think they fit in more than one area, but that there is quite a bit of commonality across the projects. And we've got Got a group of research really looking at uh, the screening side of things, so new and potential forages for screening, and any really uh, 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 ones that look very effective in terms of reducing methane in vitro. 
obviously could could feed up into the uh, into the more advanced um, applied side of the of the um, of this uh, strategy. On the uh, on the other side, we've got a number of projects all generally looking at field scale uh, near a market type of ideas. Um, whether that be with uh, with Desmanthus, there's a couple of projects looking at Desmanthus. There's, there's the uh, there's the uh, Lucina uh, technology one, uh, the work that Q uh, in conjunction with ourselves and others looking at methodologies for, for broad scale uh, adoption of a of a methodology, and then finally, um, you know using these two areas of research to supply a, a range of, of forage samples uh, that can then go into methods that would hopefully improve any uh, uh, the um, ability of a methodology to accurately reflect the reduction in methane under under commercial conditions uh, so with that i'll um, i'll wrap up thank you